Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Angel Bobs. I've been very busy since the last episode as you can see here. I've built up this, um, I've now finished off this, this thing over here that's, built, that's producing all of the different types of the um, processed ores. So if we look on the belts here I've got the, the first one showing the stereotype, then jeevalite, sapphirite, no they're the other way around, I don't know, crotinium, rubite, bobmonium and then the, and the, and the catalysts over here. So we've now got a huge stream of all of these running up and down the, at the base. I say that the, um, the rubite seems to be struggling a bit at the moment. I'll go and look at that in a, mo in a bit. And from there I'm now producing loads of iron in the same way as I was over on the, um, on the previous area but I'm turning all of that into steel and that's going really nice and quickly. I've got most of it, nearly a full red belt, well no, it's probably about half a red belt coming out of there going into the station over here. I've also got similar things with gold, so I'm producing gold, in theory I'm producing gold ore and gold plates here that are again going off to other stations and aluminium here. But these all seem to have just all seem to have stalled now which is a bit of a concern and that's I think in all of these cases, sorry both of these cases, that's because yes we've run out of rubite. And looking down here, that's down to the usual sort of struggling to balance liquids thing. So, for some reason, these aren't running. Um, okay, that looks like something I can go in and fix. Where am I at the moment? Okay, I'm here. Let's move the train out of the way because there's something trying to get past. But I can now run, hopefully run down here and fix that. Oh, I see what's happened here. I've um, got this pipe going to the wrong place. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> Okay, that's sorted. I'd made a, f a few mistakes here. One was trying to link this uh, nitric acid output to the purified water output of these systems, so that that was uh, a, sim a simple mistake. Uh, I'd also forgot to put the clarifier back in so after I'd expanded this uh, processing facility, and I'd had too much purified water as well. So balancing liquids seems to be rather difficult in this game. <laughs> so the, the problem the, here I've got um, I've got the nitric waste water being produced by the um, by the float flotation cells here. And then that's turning it into mineralized water which I'm just throwing away and purified water which gets looped around and used again. The problem is I had another facility down at the bottom here producing purified water as fast as possible and another one at the top here doing the same to try and just, because I was running out of it. And so keeping it balanced so that I have the right amount of purified, so that I have enough purified water but not too much has been really difficult. So what I've done is just slap this massive tank in here so that can catch some of the excess for now. And I've put an over, so a top-up valve down here, which means this will only allow water through if there's, if there's less than 80% on this side. So hopefully that'll be enough to keep it balanced. I might, I don't know, we'll have to see how it goes. It's, it's it's a bit fiddly, let's put it that way. So from there, I should now be making nitric acid here. Ah, that's what's wrong here. This is turning into a slightly more buildy episode than I uh, usually intend these to be, but um, I hope that's okay with everyone. And it's, it's still interesting. There we go. Right. So now I've got there we go. I've now I've got all of these running happily. The nitric acid is going to be coming through from here. I'm stuck in pipes and so now we've hopefully yes now we've got crystallized uh, root pipes coming through here as well okay good that seems to be running again happily so as I was saying at the beginning of the episode I've got the um, all six of the ore facilities built up now in the, basically in the same way they're all bringing in the ore crushing it floating it uh, leaching it to get the three different types out now that would be simple except they all do it in slightly different ways so this one it produces sulfuric wastewater and then uses sulfuric acid so does this one no this one uses um, hydrofluoric acid so that's a, a different a different complication but you get um, when you float an ore you get the wastewater that you can then turn into the into the acid to produce for the next step but I don't think you get quite enough of it so as long as I'm using at least some of the chunks, then I'll probably be all right. As long as I'm using, sorry, as long as I'm using enough of the chunks to to, to balance the um, to, to mean I'm producing enough of this wastewater to produce the acid for the crystals, then I should be okay. Here, yeah, same sort of idea. This one's easy. This one's just sulfuric acid. Um, this one's hydrochloric acid. So again, we have the same sort of potential problem here. But as long as we keep using the chunks. 
maybe it'll be alright. And so on and so on. Now, the other concern here that I've got is with the catalysts. So, essentially anything that uses the uh, the crushed ore will, will use the mineral catalyst, which is so it produces the crushed stone and uses the mineral catalyst. That's what's going on up here. The brown catalyst is being used um, because it's just using the crushed versions of each of the two ores. So that's relatively straightforward. I've got, I seem to have plenty of crushed stone at the moment. In fact, I've got too much crushed stone. I've been, I've been struggling with that, but I'll get onto that in a bit. And then anything that uses the, what we've got here, that's this crystal. Anything that uses the chunks uses the crystal um, catalyst, which is made from the crystal dust, which is made when you crush this, the off, the, the side product of making the chunks. The problem here is I believe that the crystal dust is not produced fast enough for the um, for this, so I don't think this is going to be a self-supporting system. The next stage is the anything that uses the crystals, like this one that's making the gold, which uses the third type of catalyst, which is a mixture of the other two. So from the point of view of how much of everything is used, that's that's basically fine. It's not, it's not, it, 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 it's roughly equivalent. So, as you can see here, the gold is running happily, the aluminium is running happily, this is great, they're all being fed over to stations up here, so I now actually have supplies of, of gold ore, um, not very much of it in it. Oh, actually, no, that is a, that is a, f no, it isn't. Yeah, that's, that's about a third of a train ready there. There's, oh, eight trains worth there, that's great, the steel's going very well. Gold is, again, a bit slow, there's still a high, fairly high demand for that. There's lots and lots of aluminium ore and a decent amount of aluminium plate. Okay, so it's mostly gold that's struggling at the moment, but uh, I don't think I use that up that quickly, so hopefully that'll, that'll get caught up reasonably soon. So this is all ticking over reasonably nicely. The plan is that as I discover other things I'm short of, then I'm going to add them in down here and just gradually extend this down and lots of landfill over the water here, which I've, I've made a start on here, which is why we've got this sort of... It, looks, it almost looks like a QR code going on. <coughs> So we're building up this, building up some extra land for the for this bus to go down. That's going okay. Another thing I've done over here is I've started to build belts over off on my new bus uh, because that was something. That, there's a couple of reasons for this. One of them is because every time I built something over here, it took forever for the bots to bring the belts over from down here where they're being made all the way over to here where they're being used. So I wanted them to be a bit closer. I also wanted some of the newer. Um, belt types to be available. So before, as you probably remember, I only had uh, grey, yellow and red and I was using yellow generally almost everywhere and then red when I needed a longer underground or to carry a bit more stuff. I've now, because I've got plenty of the um, cobalt steel available and plenty of titanium available and the red and blue circuits, I thought well let's go all the way up to up to purple or yeah purple belts. Um, and so I've got these all being built now off the bus, it's all working perfectly now that I've got the now that I've got sufficient resources coming in. I had a big problem with aluminium and red circuits at one point because I just didn't have enough of the um, resource and, and blue circuits as well because I didn't have enough of the resources coming in. But now with all of this over here oh, get lost. <laughs> this train's always in the way. Right. Um, now with this this facility over here that's producing all of the, the steel, the gold and the aluminium, I've, I've now I seem to have got away from the um, well, I've mostly got away from it. This is a little bit of a gold ore supply problem here. Um, and electronic circuit boards, I need to look at that. Because there shouldn't be a problem with those. But anyway, so I was saying. Yeah, built up the um, the, be the belts across here. I think I've done this quite neatly, actually. Uh, I've got, as, as you can see, it's, it's just passing through all the different generations of belt. In hindsight, I probably should have put these cog and um, bearing and then titanium bearing production sort of up here as well. In, in line with the thing they were going to be feeding. And part of the reason I, I wish I'd done that is then I could have tacked in the um, the inserter construction a lot along the bottom here. I might still do that. It's not going to be that difficult to move it all up. So yeah, I think I might I might well do that. This railway line is going to be in the way, but I can sort of I can bridge over it with with underneath underground belts. That's not not too much of an issue. Um, yeah, so that's going to be one of the next things I want to do. One of the few things that's in heavy use, that's still in um, production over here, is, is inserters. Oh, and, and no, I've moved those away. That's okay. Is inserters, and they're because they're they're still being built down here. And this is a problem because red circuits aren't aren't getting into here in any way, which is why I put this box in here to unload them, because I kept running out of these stack inserters. So this bit. Is in the wrong place. It needs to be moved. I, I need I need to move that over here. And I think if I move, if I make all of these vertical, 
get rid of this bit from underneath here and to put it up here as well. Then I can put in the in the um, inserters construction along the bottom here as well because I don't I think they take the same sort of things as belts do. I will need to check that, but I think I think that's the case. So that that's not going to be too difficult if I can get if I can get that working. And I like the sort of the jet different generations being built along here. One of the other things I've done here, which I'm I'm very pleased with, is if we look at these um, boxes I'm, I'm storing everything in the, the various chests. So here I've got requester chests that are going to pull any any grey belts that turn up. There shouldn't be any in the, anywhere in the system, anywhere in the base at all. I should have upgraded everything beyond that by now. But there might be some sort of little bits of um, ammunition belts that are outside the outside the sort of the catchment area of the uh, of the of the robot ports. So. So these are going to pull in any of those that, that appear. So as you can see, this one's requesting 10,000 um, norm grey belts, and then those all get fed into here. And I've got, the, as you can see, I've got this inserter working on a sort of a funny direction, so it'll pass them up into here. Those are then put into these green boxes, and the reason I've used green chests, these are buffer chests, and that means they they can both request from the from the uh, logistics network, but they can also pass things out into it. So the idea is that any um, any loose in this case, yellow belts that are around will be requested from the network, um, but then, but it, but you won't get any sort of circular dependencies with these things because they won't pass on to other buffer chests. They'll only pass on to me, my, as in my character, if he requests any of those particular types of belts, or to any construction that happens. <coughs> so the idea is those will go. The yellow belts will go into here, and then any any that are needed for making red belts will be passed up into here and by with another funny shaped um, inserter. So I'm using. I'm using the weird shaped inserters for this because I didn't think of it until I was already built out to over here somewhere and I didn't want to try and space the whole thing out a bit more just to get the get the uh, green chests in a in a usable place. So I've then got the same thing I've got the same thing for the um, underground belts and the insert and the uh, splitters and the same for red and for yellow and for blue and for purple and then eventually I'll do the same for I think green is the next level and the next and final level of belts. So once I've got um, I think it's probably tungsten and the next level of circuits whatever that is i'll put those in here and, and work across in exactly the same way again so so i think this this is good because it, it means rather than ending up with loads and loads of belts filling up the chests like like these ones down here these yellow chests all of the, any belts that were in here will now have been pulled out and will be up here being used for construction so it's just it's it's less of a strain on my logistics storage and it's less of, a, less of a strain on the resources that are used because any any existing belts will be recycled up or upcycled into new ones. If I, for example, decided I wanted to upgrade the entire base to purple belts, uh, which I probably won't do because that would be very resource hungry, but you know, if I did hypothetically do that, then all of the yellow belts would get dumped into these boxes, all the red ones would be dumped into here, and they'd all get passed along and upgraded into the newer belts, so I wouldn't have to um, worry about the upgrades there. The other thing I've done with these um, in order to get that to work properly, and I'm going to head over there, um, if you'll excuse me for a moment. I've started using trains to get myself around the base because the base has got so big, it's just not practical to walk. And the trains are so much faster than cars, and, they don't, and they're better at navigating. I've stopped driving into pylons all the time now to start using trains. So each of these... I've not put any uh, limits on how much stuff can be put in the chests, and this means that the logistics network can put as much stuff into these chests as I want, as it wants to, at least until they fill up, and that's quite a lot of space. However, I've programmed the inserters to only insert up to 200 in the in the chest. So if the um, if the logistics network dumps 5,000 in there, then the next stage will just run off that off the 5,000 in that chest until it gets down below 200, and then we'll start making new ones. So the idea is it doesn't make too many of them. And you can see from this um, insert a configuration system here, I've got that uh, I've got it picking up from above and putting down over to this side, and so I can I can adjust this. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. You can see the inserter adjust its, uh, itself as I as I reprogram it, and so I could get it to pick up from different places. This is another Angel Bob's thing. It allows you to um, make your inserters a little bit more flexible, and that's really really useful because there's so many different. There's, there's, sometimes you end up making really complex things like this or you just haven't planned ahead properly and you need to squeeze something in and having an inserter that can pick up in different directions is incredibly useful for that. So one of the th issues I've run into I'm having a huge problem with my iron supply and my copper supply as well for the same reason uh, and this 
yeah, there's a little dribble coming through, but not very, but nothing like what's supposed to be happening. And this is because I've got so much crushed stone here. These boxes are all absolutely full, and it's backed up all the way to here, so there's just nothing coming through. And so from a few episodes ago, before I started talking about the um, the thermal water stuff, I was I was had an absolute crisis of a shortage of, of, of crushed stone. Now I've got too much of it, and I don't know what to do with it. So I'm dumping into into here to make the catalyst as fast as I can. I've put in another top-up valve here, so we're not going to be using thermal water to make catalyst until we've until we run out of crushed stone again. I'm laying down landfill all over the place, like here, as I mentioned, and up here. I thought I'd extend this so that I can bring the bus up here at some point. So I'm slapping down loads of landfill. The problem is it's coming in here and it's not being made quickly enough. I, I think maybe I need to upgrade this belt to be a, a purple belt or something so it just floods the, the stone in a lot faster. But then I have to worry about whether, these tr whether the trains are going to be able to bring it in quickly enough as well. And oh, I don't know. So that's a bit of a problem. I'm just... I, it's it's frustrating. Th throughout my entire... Um, entire game with this with this mod pack I've, it's, it feels like I've been swinging back and forth between having too much and not enough crushed stone so at one point I I laid down all this all this this whole area has brick um, bricks as the stone bricks as the as the flooring because I had too much stone I didn't know what to do with it then I then I got to the point where I was starting to do the um, was it the catalyst based yeah the catalyst based um, metal production and then I and then I, and that drained through all of my crushed stone supplies very very quickly, and I just didn't have any left. Now it's, then I so then I started doing the thermal water production, and turning that into catalyst. And now I've got too much stone again, so it's it's really hard to balance. I'm, I have to admit I am really quite struggling, really rather struggling with that. So it, in fact that's that's the same in in other areas as well. The the crystal um, crystal dust. This is this is what's produced when you um, produce when you float a metal ore let's see if we can find some here we go when you float a metal ore you get the chunks and then the crystals coming out of it like this the chunks go off to be processed into whatever and then the crystals you crush them down you get more crushed stone and there's crystal dust stuff out as well and then that but that is produced probably I believe it's not produced fa quite fast enough in order to make enough catalyst for that as I was saying earlier so the saving grace for that perhaps is going to be this system over here where I'm not doing any sort of catalyst stuff but then that's backed up as well because I'm producing cobalt too fast and zinc or ni uh, nickel whichever one that is again I'm producing that too, too more in, in greater quantities than I'm using it so it's all backed up so we're not producing very much cr crystal dust up here either it's all just a bit there's too many things that rely on each other and that and that I think is what makes it makes it difficult that said, at the moment, we seem to be in a sort of, a, maybe an unstable equilibrium, but I am producing everything as fast as I need it, pretty much. If we look at the recent thing, there's wood. <laughs> wood is short, oh, for God's sake. Okay, I might need to go in and tweak the wood production. But, yeah, essentially, there's a bit of firefighting going on, but I do feel like I'm making decent progress. There's more crushed stone being picked up from there. How are we doing? It's 124,000 in each of those. <laughs> it's going to go forever. Um... Yeah, so I've fought. I've, I've solved the problem I was having before of there not being of, of having massive gold shortages and um, aluminium shortages. I need to rename these stations. So that that is, I think, pretty much solved now. So I've got my blue circuits and my red circuits being being produced. Yeah, it's not producing them incredibly quickly, but it's. I think it is probably producing them quickly enough. I need to look at this transistor production. Actually, that's that's the limiting factor on a lot of my stuff. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm rambling a bit now. But yes, this this game always seems to be you you get you find out what your what your current shortage is, and then you go in and find out why that's a shortage, and then just keep tracing it back and back and back until you eventually manage to find your bottleneck, and then can extend that. <clears throat> I think the next thing I'm going to be doing after this is probably looking into um, research for. Her slightly more complicated thing. So one of the things I want to research is modules. So partly so I can make things go faster, but also because I think that's a prereq for a lot of the more advanced stuff down here, like um, rocket stuff, but in order to actually complete the game. But this weirdly requires somewhere up here. Here we go. This one, there's really early research for hatchery. And that takes these things, alien plant life samples. So I need to work out how to do those. 
I think that is probably going to be my next major interesting project. So we'll have a look at that at some in, um, before the next episode and we'll see how that goes. There's been other little bits of firefighting, like I discovered I'd run out of uh, these, these, these um, warehouses filled up completely, so I'm dumping that onto, and then I discovered a use for it, so I'm dumping it onto a train. Oh, here you can see use of the uh, the purple underground belt. Look how far those go, that is, that's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm dumping that into a train station up here, uh, there's loads of rum here, and because that is required for making one of the acids for, I think, rubite. <clears throat> uh, not that rubite, this rubite. And that was, just wasn't happening fast enough. So again, I've got that being brought in by train. And then we, again, we've got the uh, the top-up valve here because this wasn't creating the assets fast enough. So, yes, that's quite a lot of stuff. I mean, I've built, basically finished this bit and gone in and actually, and, and, and got it working. I put in this bit and this bit, and that's got me the gold and the aluminium. And that's got everything running over, and, and steel, sorry. And that's got everything over here running again properly. So that, I, and, and there's the belts, of course. So that, I think, is a, a nice summary of where I've got to. And look, there's a train in the way again. Let's put it up there. Um, so yeah, I think this is going pretty well. Um, uh, yeah, let's think. I'm going to think about research for the next episodes. And um, I hope you'll join me for that, and we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.